Hi, I'm Marion McPartland. My guest today on Piano Jazz is Lee Konitz, and he's one of the great jazz stylists on alto sax. Not only that, he's a composer, arranger, teacher, and there's more. He plays piano, too. Oh, I know that because I just heard you. <laughs> so, but we're not going to start out with you on piano. Thank you very much. I appreciate are we, that. Are you pleased about that? <laughs> well, we have enough songs to play here, whether you do them on alto or soprano or piano, I, whatever. I, I figured once I established some credentials, I could get away with the piano playing a little easier. Well, you were just in Europe, and, and I guess I should congratulate you for winning this wonderful Danish prize. What do they the call that? It's the first prize I ever won. It took me 64 years to win a prize. And so I recommend to all the students out there, stay around as long as you can. Not only that, go to Denmark. <laughs> that, don't change anything, just go there. <laughs> but that's wonderful. It's like the sort of Danish Nobel Prize, isn't it? Someone referred to it that way. I wrote my brother in Chicago and told him I'd, he was telling everybody in Chicago I won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> So no, it's not quite that. But it's, very it's pretty darn good. Well, let's play something. Here oh. we are. Um, getting sentimental over you. Fine. Okay? Great. <laughs> You know, I've always won wondered, like on that last tune, how you develop all those lines. Where did you, when you first started playing, um, did you start right out thinking in those terms? We're going to play these long, sort of interesting lines <laughs> on the tune. 
Well, I, I, I heard uh, the great players of that time, they were playing long, interesting lines, I think. So I tried to do, do it my way. Uh, and uh, during the time that I had studied and apprenticed with Lenny Tristano, he was very much, uh, um, he very much encouraged that kind of playing. Did you study? Did you play in school? What happened? I played uh, in school and I studied with some people who just uh, taught me how to play the saxophone. Uh, and then I met Tristano in my teens and, uh, and became interested in the music. And he encouraged, uh, uh, encouraged me uh, greatly to try to play as spontaneously as possible and at the same time know as all the information that's necessary to make that happen properly. And, and uh, it does work. It's, it's a funny thing. It's a combination of, of no, like you, in order to do what we just did with that tune, you really have to know the, to know the tune. You can't just sort of have the tune in your head. You have to basically know all the ins and outs of the changes and the melodic line. I think that's essential for playing these tunes. I like <clears throat> to play very familiar tunes and uh, and then uh, uh, try to stretch them as far as they'll go. I mean, that's really kind of the name of the game for me. And uh, that could mean even uh, uh, removing the chord structure, agreeing uh, to play the song without the chord structure and make up a, a totally new harmonic progression, but based on the melody of that song and the meter of that song. Well, now that's something you'd have to rehearse, though, isn't it? Well, it depends. If, if people are experienced doing that, uh, I do this a lot with the people I play with all over the world. They're all they're all familiar enough with all the things you are and those very uh, familiar standards that they're willing to take more chances. Well, see, I, I don't know. I'd like to try that, but um, I don't know how good I'd be at... Oh, sort of instantly reharmonizing it. Now, you were just telling me something that Kenny Werner did, that he started the tune in a whole... Oh, yeah, he would play the Instead first two playing... minor chords. Now, what would he do? He would play F major to B flat major. <laughs> but it... That's about what it would be, wouldn't yeah. it, if you think of the melody line? Right. And then, of course, that just set the whole thing up into a different direction. But there was always an allusion to all the things you are. You want to try it once for a second? Yeah, just a second, yeah. Uh, let me get my horn, okay? Okay. So I'm going to play all the things you are uh, without stating anything inherent in all the things you are, except the, the fact that the melody will roll by, and then you just react to that. Lots. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hmm. Well, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I, I just. Um, it was interesting. It's something yeah. new and different for me. And boy, that's nice, you know, to be, be doing the show and have somebody come along and, and get me into a different mode. <laughs> I love it. Great. Now, <laughs> um, I've got to ask you a few things before we go into another t another tune. Um, for a while there, a few years ago, I was, did Paul Desmond sort of get a lot from your playing? Did he? It seems to me there were times when he sounded like he had really been listening to you a lot. I think he had been. You know, we all listen to each other and borrow and steal like crazy. I don't know if it's borrowing or stealing so much as, like me with Bill Evans. I mean, I hear something that he did, and I'm thinking, oh, isn't that beautiful? And I don't necessarily want to copy every note just to be in that style of playing. Yeah, I think it's common property once it's out there. And it's up to us to listen closely and, and rearrange the parts. I think it's a great thing for, for kids to be involved in this kind of thing, to be. I uh, I think of uh, the kids are getting the advantage of all of this technology that's been codified more each each week. It seems there's new schools opening up and new opportunities. And just look at the. Boy, I heard a a record today by Benny Green. A oh, solo that kid record. is fantastic. I mean, he played. Uh, you don't know what love is, and I had to stop what I was doing to really listen to it. It was beautiful. I mean, he's been doing that for a while. And what is he, 12? I <laughs> know. <laughs> 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 I mean, they just... He's about, he's about 25, dirty, yeah. rotten little kid. But, I mean, he's been swinging hard for a number of years now. Know, and why great. not? I mean, Mozart was doing it when he was five, yeah. right? Yeah. If, he gets yeah. proper, if you get the proper information, uh, you know, and work at it, there it is. Well, now let's get some more information from you. Um, you suggested earlier doing a, a, a unaccompanied solo on the horn. Oh. I would love that. Oh, thank you. I, I do that usually every day in my bedroom, so I'll try to share that. Well, we'll all we'll all think <laughs> think of you in your bedroom. Thank you. Uh, what, so, what is this solo going to be? I'll play uh, <clears throat> some variations of Stella by Starlight. Uh, I wanted to just mention that um, I think. Uh, um, one of our obligations as horn players, of course, is to be able to realize the, the song, the meter of the song, and be able to play variations knowing how that is laid out, uh, 32 bars, and all of the information that we must know about the chords and everything. So we have to imply the harmonies, of course, but I think that's uh, when I'm teaching uh, anybody. I, I, this is usually where I start, just to find out how to really play a tune very straight ahead and then stretch it out as far as you can take it. I can't wait to hear this. No, <laughs> well, <laughs> don't go away. I won't. <laughs> Thank you. 
it's funny. I was listening to that Stella by Starlight, and and I could really follow the melody so so beautifully, and I could I could hear the I could actually hear the harmony that I would do behind that. Oh, great! But it mightn't have been what you wanted to hear. <laughs> but, well, but you know that it was it, it was very logical. I thought the way you did that. And oh, thank you. Well, now I guess it'd be a good moment to let people know that my guest is Lee Konitz, I'm Marion McPartland, and this is Piano Jazz. I, I thought, uh, since I had the presumption to play a solo piece that maybe you would bless us with one of your own. Well, this is this is one by Dave Brubeck. And when it first came out, I guess I took a liking to it and been playing it ever since. In your own sweet way, you've probably played that. Oh, yes, that's a nice tune. Okay, here goes.
Thank you. It's 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 funny. I'm I guess because you're here, I'm hearing different things to play. Then, Good. you know, it's I I uh, I guess you're making me think about things I wasn't thinking about before. It's nice. Uh, thank you. It's great. I guess it's what you want to do anyway when you when you're teaching kids. I'm probably just another student at heart. I can I can. Uh, take any amount of this. You know. Well, that's great. I was just thinking about some new records you must have out, or new CDs. Don't you have something, not only that you made in Europe, something coming out in this country that we can all hear? I, I did make six in Europe uh, last year. Uh, a small company in Belgium and a small company in Germany. Incidentally, uh, I thought that small company would sell a thousand records around Germany and maybe on the outskirts. And I got a fax from my Japanese friend. He said he just bought it in Tokyo. Oh, so, that's wonderful. Now you yeah. know it'll get good distribution. Well, all these situations are different. One's a bass, du uh, bass and saxophone duet. Another one is with a, a German rhythm section I've been playing with for a number of years, and a duo with Harold Danko. And oh, really? Big band thing. I was invited as a guest. and. So they're all different. Now, how now that's interesting. How do you do something with a big band? I mean, that, then that's got to be an arranged thing, hasn't it? Or at least for I them. Just, uh, stick a chord uh, structure in front of me and point, <laughs> and then I try to put it together. <laughs> well, let's stick a, a, a chord structure in front of us now, and let's do <laughs> do body and soul. Oh, good. How about that? Okay. <laughs>
That was pretty nice. Beautiful. You're very lovely to play with. Oh, <laughs> thank you. You make me feel a lot better. There's more conversation and improvisation to come with Marianne McPartland and her guest, Lee Konitz, in a program which originally aired in 1992. This is Piano Jazz from NPR Music. Well, listen, now that we're going to do something totally uh, improvisatory at two pianos. Uh, let me preface this uh, by saying that uh, I, I do this uh, every day in, in my apartment. In your uh, bedroom? No, this is in the, in the other room. Oh, okay. But um, uh, the way I do this is just to uh, kind of close my eyes and and play very tactily. Not tactfully, Ta but tactile. tactile yeah. Tactile. That's a name of a tune, possibly. Tactile. T-A-C-T-I-L-E. That's a great word. Yeah. I love that. I'm a real word snob. I love that word. Tactilely. Well, you can play tactilely here. We you don't mind. We don't stop you. You can I mean, close I can, your I, eyes, I, pretend you're in your Yeah. In your I might go to sleep, but, uh, you know, that's a chance you take when you close your eyes. Yeah, just don't snore and don't... don't <laughs> Don't bump your head on the keys. <laughs> as long as you do that, we'll let you sleep. Okay. I thought that was nice. I enjoyed that. Thank you. Had a nice little theme 
running through it, except after the first time around, I think I forgot what you originally did. But it was nice. Wow. I get carried away with those things. I could go on for hours. Really, it's so it's all pre mind music, and that, that's a lovely space in there that needs to be explored more. I think. If you know what I just said, <laughs> pre pre mind. I was just trying to digest <laughs> that. In other in other words, it, it's uh, we were thinking about it, but not thinking about it. I don't. Well, I guess somebody asked Duke Ellington, like if he thought about uh, what he was going to play before he he played it. And he kind of admitted that he did think of pre think some of the things he was going to do, but. I, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Do well, I, I do think uh, that uh, as a pianist you were more obliged to do that. As a horn player, you can just stick the thing in your face and start going. Uh, I mean, uh, that's one way of doing it. I uh, respect very much the people who are able to organize and play what they know. But uh, it seems like that's as far as that kind of playing will go. I mean, there's always... Uh, what we know, and then uh, transcending that is a more kind of a spiritual contact with the music, I think. Like a mystical. It's very mystical in a way, I think. Well, things that that you just start not knowing where you're going, there is a, some, some awe of mysticism to that. I heard that to, to improvise, you were supposed to be able to stand there or sit there and compose in front of everybody. That's what made this music very special. If you had the naivete or whatever it, it takes to do that, when it works, there are a group of people out there that love that process. And uh, I, that's the only way I can think that I've been able to continue going on because I'm not a virtuoso in the usual sense of the word. And so I just think there are some people that love to witness and hear, of course, when it gets together and is uh, more of a fine art, but they will still accept uh, the efforts, I think. You mean total improvisation? Yeah. Well, I mean playing tunes or whatever, but really trying to play them in a new way all the time and not just rehash what's been done. Uh, we could have a go at another tune, you know, Lee. We could do, um, we could do a, nice, a nice ballad. Uh, that you suggested earlier, Little Girl Blue. Oh. Would you want to try that? Yes. Now, you mentioned doing that on the soprano. Yeah, I'd like to try like that. like to do that? And you said in three, four time? Yeah, that would make it a little faster than a ballad, actually. Okay. It would well, just be like playing it in 12-8 time, I suppose. You could think of it that way. I don't want to think of that. I might wind up playing a rock bass. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to hear that. <laughs> no, I won't. I promise I won't. <laughs> okay.
it's kind of fun playing that in three. I think that's the first time I ever played that tune. <laughs> now you tell me. <laughs> Didn't want to tell you before we started. Just to recap, for those of you who just tuned in, my guest is Lee Konitz. I'm Marion McPartland, and this is Piano Jazz. I'd like to do one for you. Oh. I just thought I'd do another of uh, John Coltrane's things, Naima. Oh, great. I do you play that. that? I haven't really, no, but I'm going to lend an ear. Okay.
Beautiful. I like that tune. Beautiful. And John would appreciate that. You think he would? Yeah. God, I used to go and hear him. We were playing in um, Indianapolis at a place called The Embers. Did you ever play there? No. A club called The Embers. And he was down the street at another club. We went there on the night off to hear him. Uh, John Coltrane and Jimmy Garrison. He had McCoy Tyner with him and Elvin Jones. Oh, I guess yeah. that was your, like the original group. Yeah. And it's amazing how just hearing that sort of affected what I did. Mm. You know what I was thinking about, how things in the atmosphere like change your feeling from night to night. I mean, if you're having, if you come to work not feeling great, does it affect your playing or can you kind of overcome it or what uh, of happens? Of course, it fa affects the playing. But uh, I uh, decided a long time ago when I stopped uh, priming myself, so to speak, uh, to play a, a brilliant set each time with whatever, uh, that uh, there's a very large range of dynamics that we can function within. And uh, there's nothing dishonorable with playing at the bottom part of the range, uh, which could be, uh, which could mean more simple and more closer to the, the basic song if you're playing basic songs and uh, hopefully uh, trying to rise and uh, get as intense and as imaginative as possible in the process. But uh, I, the only thing that's dishonorable to me is to play mechanically. So I would do anything to avoid that. Yeah. Well, this is something I bet you tell, tell, tell to your students then, don't you? Well, that's one of the main messages I feel like I can communicate. Are you doing a lot of teaching in colleges, clinics, and things? Yes, in my travels, uh, mostly. Uh, uh, I'm going to Europe uh, and doing a week of workshop in Germany, and, uh, and Bob Brookmeyer called me to do a day there at his new... Do you know about that new school? I've heard something about this school in Rotterdam. Is this... Well, it's a very, very ambitious program that uh, he's calling the New World uh, School of Jazz, or the World School of Jazz. It's really all-encompassing, including a, a long list of illustrious players and hopefully teachers. Including yourself. Well, I'm on the list and uh, happy to be. It's supposed to start in the fall of 92. <clears throat> and he's talking about recording studios and, and the facilities for the students to play and and the teachers to tour while they're over, you know, and just all kinds of things are considered. It should be a very, very exciting prospect. Let's get into one more uh, totally uh, improvised tune. Um, uh, on the alto this time? Yeah. Like Someone in Love? Oh, that sounds like a good one. Okay.
You've been listening to Piano Jazz with host Marianne McPartland and her guest Lee Konitz, a program which originally aired in 1992. Piano Jazz is a production of South Carolina Public Radio. The producer is Sherry Hutchinson, recording engineer David Glover, mastering engineer Bill Sexton, executive producer William D. Hay. I'm David Mitchell. If you wish to contact us, our email address is pj at scetv.org. Our postal address is 1041 George Rogers Boulevard, Columbia, South Carolina, 29201. More information about the music selections and artists on Piano Jazz is available from our website, pianojazz.npr.org. There you'll find a link to subscribe to our free weekly preview podcast, Piano Jazz Shorts. And you can also listen to a recent program in its entirety. Support for Piano Jazz comes from the Friends of Piano Jazz, NPR member stations, and NPR. Support for this episode's original production was also provided by Exxon Corporation and by the National Endowment for the Arts. Support for digitally archiving piano jazz programs was provided by Save America's Treasures through a partnership between the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Park Service Department of the Interior. Support for NPR comes from NPR contributors, which include the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, working with others to build a culture of health for all, on the web at rwjf.org, and the Walton Family Foundation, working to prepare all students for a lifetime of opportunity by ensuring access to high-quality K-12 choices. More information is available at waltonk12.org. This is NPR.